I know where there's some, right here in the hall clerk. No, no, my I have a Hi there. Um, we're revisiting this uh, leader signal generator, LSG16. Um, I recapped it a number of years ago and put a video up about that. And I like using this thing. It's a, it's a uh, reliable, pretty stable analog signal generator. It's transistorized from the mid-70s. The one thing that I, did, or one of the things that I discussed in the previous video was the alignment of the pointer was off, which means the high precision uh, capacitors in here have drifted a bit, so that to get 455, you have to go about there. The little triangle right there is for the 455, but with this you have to go about there. And you kind of have to fish around for it. And uh, I was watching uh, X-Ray Tony B's channel the other day, and up pops a signal generator. Electronically, electronically, it's exactly the same thing as this. A number of these came out of Japan. Uh, numerous companies all using fundamentally the same design. It even has pretty much the same front panel layout. And what X-Ray Tony B was doing was adding a digital readout to it. Um, so this video is a outright, uh, not copy I hope, but uh, certainly uh, prompted by X-Ray Tony B. And I think that was about, I don't know, five, six years ago, I think he put that out. I think he got the idea from somebody else before that, I hope that's the case. but. But that's what I'm going to do to this one. I've, uh, I'm going to add a digital readout right up here along the top uh, to tell me what this isn't quite telling me, to let me get pretty precise in my frequency measurements, a frequency output for this thing. I'm going to do that with one of these guys. This is a digital readout available uh, on eBay, uh, Amazon, wherever you get your cheap electronics. Um, this is an eight digit. This one happens to be red. You can get it in blue. I think, in fact, this one might even change colors. I'm not sure. But that will sit right up here and uh, tell me what frequency I'm actually tuned into. This goes up to this. I think goes up to 25 megahertz. I don't recall. It's the PLJ 8 LED. This is an R, not a C. Uh, but they all seem to be the same. And it goes up to a high number. High number is high, certainly as high as I want it up to 60. So it'll measure up to, to 60 megahertz. Um, the signal generator is theoretically capable of outputting um, 60 megahertz. If you go to the F band over here, 30 is about here, and 100 is about here, but I think they're doing it with harmonics and not with direct generation. Um, so anyway, that's the project. The project is to add this. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll design and print a 3D case for that so it doesn't sit up there like that, but it will sit about there. And I've got a uh, some red acrylic I'll put across the front so that so that it looks nice, and we'll hide the electronics in a in a plastic 3D printed box. That's the project. Um, first, we have to figure out how we're going to power this. This is a nine volt device. I don't recall what this has a full wave rectifier as I recall inside of it, but I don't remember what the uh, DC voltage is. We'll either tap that or we'll we'll use a um, a uh, switching power supply, something like one of these, to generate um, to, to generate nine volts DC from the from the uh, 
the main, the, the 120, 125, whatever it is. So this is switching power supply. And I'll either use this or I'll be able to tap the power supply directly from this. One or the other, we'll see. And I'll show you where we're going to get the signal from to for this to read. This reads the if you present it with a square wave or a sine wave, it'll read it'll read the frequency of said wave. Um, so that's what we're doing. First things first, I've got to take this apart and uh, see what kind of voltage it generates on its own and see if I feel like I can this is about a 120 milliamp draw it might be more than this power supply wants to give me but we'll see we'll see so first we'll take it apart see what happens <laughs> It's a it's a uh, pretty straightforward little piece of equipment. Um, somebody asked me when I posted the original one why I didn't calibrate it, and the reason I didn't calibrate it is that um, leader didn't provide any uh, trimmers or padders to pad these tiny little capacitors that are in here, these little precision capacitors. So it can't really be tuned up unless you unless you sat and fished through old box of equivalent capacitors till you found the one that gave you exactly the right uh, reading on the dial, <laughs> which I am not interested in doing. So for this project, what we have here is a um, full wave rectifier right here, a couple of diodes, some filter caps. We'll take a look at where we're going to potentially uh, tap into the power supply of this and see what it's generating. I don't even know that. And then we'll look at where we grab, and I suspect it will be off this little board right here, where we'll grab um, uh, the signal the original signal and where we'll grab it is quite a ways upstream from its output. Its output here is is attenuated um, by a resistor bank and and this potentiometer here and where we want to get it is way before that when it first gets generated and put out through its through its output uh, transistor. So we'll uh, figure that out as well. So first things first, let's look at the schematic. Okay, here's the uh, schematic for the leader signal generator. Basically three parts to this. The power supply is down here. Uh, the uh, uh, oscillator for the uh, modulation tone, 400, 400 hertz, I think that's what it is, is here. And up here, uh, this bunch of stuff right here is the the uh, uh, RF oscillator, which has its output right here, Q102, and um, so this is the maximum output right here. Goes through this this um, potentiometer RF fine on the front panel, through a point the zero five capacitor, and then to and a bunch of attenuation stuff and finally out here uh, you can switch to high output or low output. Low output um, sucks away more of the, sends more of the signal to ground. Um, so what we'll do is probably put capacitor or tap for the RF right there, right in this area. Come on right there. Uh, that way we won't change the load on the uh, this output transistor much. 
and we'll tap it right at the upper end of the uh, RF fine pot a potentiometer. So that will go off through a probably a 0.05 depends on how much signal is coming out of there. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll cobble this together and take a look at it but uh, depends on how much signal is coming out but probably through a 0.05 capacitor and onto our onto our um, frequency meter. I took a look down here at the power supply and measured the voltages. There is a 10 volt um, source right here, but I'm looking at this and thinking uh, 150 milliamp t uh, extra load right here might throw the biasing off for for this transistor as well as this transistor. So I think I won't do that. I think what I'll do is is uh, tap off the the 115 primary here uh, for the mains and add in a uh, an AC to DC converter. I have a little tiny one and mount that in the box and that'll put it on the other side of uh, putting it over here will uh, keep the um, uh, well I'll show you when I put it together. So I think I'll tap the mains right here where it goes into this transformer and then uh, add the add the AC to DC converter right in here and power the the frequency counter with that the readout with that directly. That'll handle 500 milliamps uh, and the uh, that won't hurt this end, the, in the primary side of the power transformer. Um, and that will uh, provide voltage, plenty of power for the frequency counter slash readout and won't burden this unduly. So what we've got to do is tap in here, pull some power off here, and uh, I'll cobble that together, we'll tack it together, and we'll see what it looks like, see, like, see if it works. <laughs> 